You see, the bottom line, boys, is not to have that flop sweat, the stink of death, as we call it, uh, when you are around women. And um, what they were trying to say in that film, and um, what you may not understand, and uh, clearly the characters were trying to come to an understanding about this, is that it doesn't matter if you get laid tonight. You cannot be worried about that. In the long haul, when you get laid, what you need to know is that the important thing is never to give up your self-esteem, never to get up, give up your money, never waste an inordinate amount of time listening to a woman blab. Don't do favors, don't lend money, don't paint apartments, don't help anybody move. Forget all that stuff. Forget it. You have to go out and act as if you have a life where you can live with or without getting laid. The indifference of it all is what attracts women. If it looks like you've got better things to do or better people to do, women will crave you. If it looks like you have to, have to, have to, have to, have to get laid... Women will take great pleasure in shunning you and making fun of you to their friends, too. Guys ask me, what's a good opening line when I go out? And I say the best opening line is no opening line. The best thing to do is to go to a bar or a club and plan on spending the evening drinking, talking to the bartender, or just hanging out. People watching. To look like you're too hip for the room. You are too hip for the room. The ones who are not too hip for the room are the ones going around going, haven't I met you somewhere before? Oh, Jesus. Don't you think women hear that crap all the time and laugh at you? Nothing attracts women more than your indifference. Your arrogance. I once had a woman I was effing regularly tell me how arrogant I was. Did it stop her from getting into a relationship with me? Did it stop her from effing me? No. It was just the usual bitching and complaining, but guess what? I was just as arrogant when you met me. That's not going to change now. She's long gone. But you know what? Being arrogant got her into my bed. You bet I'm arrogant. I'm a jerk and I'm an a-hole. And I'm proud. You boys have to stop looking and acting desperate. You boys have to have a life. You know what? I tell you, when you have two concert tickets, that is not a vacuum waiting to be filled. It's not. I mean, this week in Los Angeles, let me give you an example, okay? Now, they're old, and I agree with you. They're old, and they should have retired a long time ago. But there you go. The Rolling Stones are going to be playing, among other venues, the Hollywood Bowl. And I'd be willing to bet there are people out there right now who the other day got on the Ticketmaster website or got on the Ticketmaster phone number, waited for 10 a.m. to come around, and then got two tickets to see the Rolling Stones at the Hollywood Bowl. Now you've got two, you're going, and now you feel like you need to bring somebody else. When in reality, you could take that other ticket and scalp it. You could sell it to a ticket broker probably for twice what you paid for it, and it'll pay for your own ticket. Or you can call one of your buddies up on the phone and bring them along. You don't have to ask a girl out on a date. Are you kidding me? Concerts, ball games, events. You bring your friends to that stuff. Restaurants, you like expensive restaurants? Great. Don't bring chicks. Bring your male friends. Make it a male bonding experience. Stop with the expensive gifts, expensive dates. Stop. It doesn't work. And the desperation, it doesn't work. In fact, it works against you. You have to be prepared and look like you prepared to spend the rest of your life just hanging out with your buddies, going out and having a few drinks, having a few laughs, going to concerts, going to ball games. If you meet a chick along the way and she wants to have sex with you, great. But you can't make that the object of everything you do. 
They can smell it, they know it, and they will use you. When I go to bars, I don't talk to chicks at the bar. They come to me, whether they know who I am or not. I do not approach women, and I won't. Ever. Now, if a woman comes to me and she has an opening line, I might respond to it. But there's no way I'm going to be put in the loser's position of having to introduce myself to anyone. I'm perfectly happy going out to a bar, going out to a club, having a few drinks, and watching the other people. I do not need to pick up chicks. Look, if I need a sure thing, I, I, all my life I had a list of phone numbers, a list of booty calls available to me. And if what I need is to get laid, I'll just get out old dependable there, or one of the uh, 20 old dependables, go over there, get the job done, and then uh, go home. But I do not go out to clubs or bars with the idea of picking up chicks. It puts you behind the eight ball. You don't want to be behind the eight ball. You don't. So please stop writing to me and asking me, what's a good opening line? Where's a good place to go? The good place to go is a place where you just want to go out and hang out. Where you don't mind having a drink, watching the game, hanging out with a buddy. Maybe you have other friends who hang out there. Or maybe you just want to go in and see what other people are doing. How stupid they look. You have to put yourself in a too hip for the room position. And believe me, if you keep doing that, women will come to you. Got it? All right, now, if you, are, um, if you are looking to avoid serious relationships, avoid commitment, avoid marriage, if you have questions or complaints about things your professor uh, lectures about in this classroom, all you do is call our toll-free telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. This is the class where we acknowledge that the reason men go on dates is to get laid. That's the reason. We want the path of least resistance. We want the shortest distance between two points. We don't want to hear you going blah, 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 blah. We don't want to talk about your dog, your boss, how you had to take a mental health day last week. We really don't care about you. We care about you spreading your legs. That's what we care about. It's hard for a lot of women to accept. And if you've got little uh, rug rats or crumb crunchers at home, we have no interest. Got it? Professor Tiffany on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. 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 How are you? Do you yeah. care, Tiffany? I, I, I kind of do. Mm-hmm. What can I do for you? <laughs> Here's the thing. Last night... <clears throat> I went to, <coughs> excuse me, I went to a strip club with an old friend, and my boyfriend got really upset. An old friend, meaning a male friend? <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh. Why'd you do that? Um, because it's on the way home to my house from where we were eating dinner. Why were you out to dinner with an old male friend? Because I hadn't seen him in a while. Uh-huh. And is this a male friend whose penis you've seen? No. Never. Never. So you never dated him? No. Not at all. Uh -huh. And why did you need to go to a strip club with him? You could have just had dinner and come home. This is true, but we just thought it would be a laugh. And have you ever been to Jumbo's Crown Rant? Yes. It's a burlesque. It's like a Chem or Maxim. It's not really a strip club. Well, the point is, why didn't you call your boyfriend? Because he lives 45 minutes away. Yeah, well, you, know, you could have called him and invited him. Then he could have said, I'm 45 minutes away. This is true. But I didn't think of it. Because I didn't think it was... Well, you need to start video. thinking of those things if you want to have a boyfriend here. <coughs> I agree. and I Because you will lose him if you do that kind of stuff. I understand. But, see, I just don't see why it's a big deal. Because I would never do anything. It's a big deal. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Oh, come on. 
It's a big deal. Um, I just don't see what the big deal is. Really, I, I, well, it doesn't matter. matter whether you see what it is. It's a big deal. Most guys would not approve of that. Why? Because, number one, who is this male friend? That's what most guys are going to think. Two, going to a, a, a club with nudity with this male friend. Three, not calling him? All right, I'm beaten, I'm beaten from all angles. I've gotten no support on You're him. not going to get any support. In fact, uh, how would you feel if he starts going out to strip clubs without you? I wouldn't care. That's okay with you? Yeah, it's fine. Really? How about if he went with a, a, a female friend? That's fine. That's good. That's fine. Really? I know. I trust him. It's not a big deal. Uh-huh. Well, most guys are not happy with that. They will not uh, accept that. All right. They, 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 they just won't. <laughs> and by the way, I, not even a phone call? Not, no, not a phone call. Yeah, well, that, no, no, that does, that does, no, there's not a guy out there who would accept that. <gasps> not one. Gosh. Not one. Not one? Hi, honey. I'm a jumbo's clown room with an old <laughs> friend. You could have at least called. You didn't call because you didn't want to hear what he was going to say. No, I didn't. I just didn't even think of it. I didn't. Don't, you didn't think, think. This is your boy. This is supposed to be your boyfriend. Uh, Yet you don't care about telling him where you are, what you're doing? It's not that I don't care. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, Tom, you win. Why didn't you call him? I don't know. Well, you don't, well, dear, you need to think about it, because here's what's going to happen. You'll lose him, and then you'll lose any other man you're with that you do that to. I'm telling you right now. And by the way, dear, at 24, you're too young to have a boyfriend. <laughs> I think you just, uh, you've, you, you've, you've got a boyfriend like you were casting a play. You had to get an actor and play the part of the boyfriend. Not So you pick true. some guy 45 minutes away to be your boyfriend. So you're free to do other things if you feel like it, and you do. That's not that's not true at all. Really? Yes, it's just geographical. It's based on on income and rent prices. I can't afford to live where he lives. Uh, that's not the point, dear. You don't have to have a boyfriend who lives forty five minutes away. Well, I didn't choose to meet someone. Yeah, you that did. Forty five minutes well, away. How'd you meet him? How? Yeah, you didn't meet him at Jumbo's clown room. No, I didn't, but I met him close to my house. What was he doing close to your house? He was at a club. Where, in uh, Hollywood? East Hollywood? Yes. Wow. What was he doing there? Hanging out with friends, just like I was. Looking to pick up <laughs> the kind of hoes that go out in that part of town. <laughs> Oh, come on. Nice. Here, I live in Hollywood. Uh, you can't pull one over on me. I know who goes out there. And I know who goes to Jumbo's Clown Room, too, by the way. Yes, I saw them, and they were kind of scary. Yeah, well, there you were. <laughs> there I was. Right. right. So uh, let me ask you this question, this male friend of yours. So you're telling me he is not the least bit attracted to you. You know, I would think that if he's known me for 10-plus years, he would... He would have made his move already. Now there, you know, there are guys who don't know how to get the uh, the deal closed, who don't know how to get the job done. Ten they years, just, Tom. They, yeah, they moon after you. They they're like puppy ducks. They're hoping you'll make the first move. Yeah, no, I think it's pretty clear that that none of that. Well, you never happen. discussed it. it. Nothing is clear. In fact, isn't it amazing? This really good friend of yours, you've never had that conversation. So you asked him, you ago. said, so let me get this straight. You're not attracted to me. Is that right? We had conversations like, you know, this would never happen between us because we're not attracted to each other. So he agreed to that or that was what yeah. you said? Yeah. So he said he's not attracted to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Isn't that uh, tragic, by the way? When we pick our opposite sex friends, these are all the people we're not attracted to. <laughs> that homely bunch of poindexters and chunky chicks who, you know, we're just not interested. It happens, Tom. Our good friends. It happens. Yeah, what do you, what, what do you look like, Tiffany? What do I look like? Yeah, what do you look like? I am a petite girl. 
and I have blonde hair. So when you say you're petite, does that mean you're short or thin? I am both short and thin. Uh huh. And how do you rate on a scale of one to ten? Well, I'd say I'm an eight. You'd say that. What do other people say? I'd say they would think I was a seven and a half. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so the truth is close to a six? No, not at all. Uh -huh. You go out to Jumbo's clown room with male friends. I mean, come on. So you're saying that because I'm attractive, I can't have male friends that are not attracted to me. Is that what you're saying? If you're attractive, most men are attracted to you. That's how it works. <sighs> So, so men never have that point where it just peters out into friendship like women have. No. We'll have sex with anyone. <laughs> we'll have sex with chicks we broke up with ten years ago, if they'll have us. I can't believe it. You need to buy a new lighter there, sweetie. It's not working. You know, I think, I, I think I'm just naive then. Oh, I, I think you are too. But I'm telling <laughs> you right now, get used to this idea. A, long-distance relationships generally don't work. B, uh, you cannot have a boyfriend and go out at night with male friends and not be calling him and inviting him along, whether you think it's likely he'd show up or not. Okay, I understand that. And you, that you have to call him, you have to tell him where you are, and you have to let him know he's welcome to come. If you don't do that, he will break up with you. And You're so will the, and so right. and so will the next guy. I see the light now. I see it. Good. And thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Nina on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yes. Hi. How are you, Tom? I'm okay, Nina. Hey, I have a question. For you. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what to do. There, there's this guy that I've been seeing for about three months. Well, actually, four months. And um, he told me that he wants to have a baby with me, and he wants to have sex with me without a condom. And I don't know if I should do it or not. Well, I mean, do you, I, I, wait a minute. Do you want to have a baby? No. Then the, what's the answer? I'm sorry? Then what is the answer? Then no. I mean, why is there even a question of that? Well, because I didn't know if I should, like, give him what he wants. What, to have a baby with a guy you've been dating three months? Are you insane? No. You've been dating him three months. <laughs> I know. Well, he said and you don't want to have a baby. Why should you do that? I mean, think for a second. Do you let life wash over you like a tidal wave? I mean, that you've been dating the guy three months and you don't want to have a baby, and yet you wonder if you should do it. What is there to wonder about? No, you're right. I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be wondering about that. There's nothing to think about. Okay. That relationship is over. Over. Okay. Starting tonight. Okay. You're done. I'm done with him. You are. What if the two of you get drunk and he convinces you one time to ride bareback? Huh? No, he doesn't drink. Well, we don't. He doesn't drink. You so smoke don't weed? Drink. I'm sorry. You smoke weed or do any drugs or anything? No, no, he's not like that. He's like a really clean guy. He's like, well, he's almost hitting his 40s, so he's. That inner dad thing is kind of cool. Tell him if he wants to have a baby, he should go get married to somebody. Right. Well, he, here's the thing. He, want, he would like to just have a baby just because he wants to take care of somebody. Well, that's you know, great. You, want, you don't need a baby. Hire a surrogate mother. Yeah, he doesn't need you to do that. Yeah, and the only why I'm with him, the only reason why I'm with him is because I want a few things out of him, how I can get it. What do you want, money? Mm-hmm. Yes? And then a few other things, yeah. Oh, so you want money out of him. So okay. you're, you're having sex with him to have to get money out of him? Well, no, not necessarily. Why are you having sex with him? Because I like him. You like him. So I should I should just leave money out of this. Totally. Well, you, you, look, you either like him or you want his money. Which is it? Both. Why are you such a loser that you need to get money out of him? Well, you're right. So, in other words, you're incapable of doing anything on your own, or you're just too lazy? I'm just too lazy. Yeah, well. Yeah, and you and then you would actually think of having a baby with a guy like this. You no, actually... No, I don't want to. But you considered it.
I was just I, I just wanted to to um find out if I was doing the right thing or not. Because I don't I don't have anybody else to turn to. I don't have and Dear have, well, how complicated is that question? Here we have you. You don't want to have a baby. And we have a guy you've having sex with for twelve weeks or less. And the guy says, well, about to turn 40, I need to have a baby. So even though you don't want to have a baby and you hardly know him, you have to ask somebody what you should do. Okay, and then it's over tonight, then. It's over. Hey, hang on. Now, well, let's, let's get Mindy's opinion. Mindy, what did you want to say to Nina? Oh, she is the biggest moron. If you even have to ask the question, you shouldn't be having any kids whatsoever. That just, it grosses me out, the fact that these people are so lame. What is she thinking? Nina, what are you thinking? I don't know, I'm just being stupid. Just being stupid. I think we've got a consensus now. Joe, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Doing okay, Joe. Okay, uh, here's my story, Tom. Uh, I was uh, 17 at the time. I met a girl, and I uh, became her boyfriend. And then uh, three months into the relationship, I found out she was lying to me. She was actually 14. Uh -huh. once, I, once I figured that out, I was already by the age of 18, and we've already had sex. So after that, I took about one week to figure out how do I break up with this girl without her going psycho on me. And uh, I figured it out, and I tried giving it to her gently. After a couple of days, she went crazy. She came to my job and threatened me with her family. She came to my house. And she was following me around, and then all of a sudden, I get phone calls from her and other people saying that they're going to call the police. So I uh, tried to left town and try to keep it, you know, out of sight, out of mind. About a month later, everything cooled down, and uh, it's all thanks to you because uh, before, I was a big pussy, and I thought I had to, in order to, um, I'm sorry, in order to get uh, get laid, from, in order to get laid from a girl, I thought I had to be her boyfriend. And I thought I had to be nice, and I thought I had to buy gifts, and I thought I had to send money. And then, uh, the truth is, I get laid even more now that I'm rude to them, mean to them, uh, really don't spend any money because girls like being treated like... Like crap, like, like crap. You can't say that yeah. word on the air. Like crap, like being treated like poop. And uh, I just want to thank you and appreciate... I, I really appreciate everything you do here for guys like me, because really... I mean, all we're doing is, all we're trying to do is get laid, and we'll do anything for it. And you gotta, I like the fact that you let them, let guys know that you don't have to do anything for it, that girls want to give it up. That's right. In fact, when they become insecure or feel competitive, they'll give it up just to get a competitive edge. Exactly. I mean, I'm not trying to sit here and tell you that I know anything, because I really don't know nothing about anything. I mean, I'm only 18, and I'm just trying to make it on this world. When I was with her, I was out of college, I was working at Fry's, and I wasn't doing anything. But uh, after I started listening to Like It's 101 and after I started hearing your words of, uh, you know, after I started listening to you, I'm going to school now, and I'm on my way to become a police officer. So uh, I'm heading on the right path, and it's all thanks to you, Tom. Good for you, Joe. I'm proud. Thank you. <laughs> Fourteen. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Mike, on the Tom Likas Show with your professor. Hello. Oh. Mike. How you doing? I'm okay. Okay, so, my problem. I've been with a girlfriend for about four years off and on. Always been problems, fighting. Every time we go out somewhere to drink, there's been, like, you know, straight drama where the cops are called or something like that because of she can't handle her liquor. Right. And uh, I've been helping her out. You know, I make good money. I'm young. I'm 22. I make about you know 65 a year, and I've always been helping her out. Why have you, know, you been do? Why have you been helping her out? Well, you know, uh, we were together for a long time, and I just she never made as much money as I did, so I was always kind of like forking over the extra dollars when you know it came to going out, or you know she needed. Uh, that's extra a perfect money. excuse to not go out. I, how great is that? Yeah, I know. Why would you be forking out anything? I know. I just and I then there, then you've got issues with the police. Yeah, it's just been on and on. Why would you tolerate that? What's that? Why would you tolerate that? I I just been tolerating it because I just just so wanted to just uh, kind of have a girlfriend for some reason. Why do you need to have a girlfriend? I need to know the answer to that question. 
I never really was truthfully faithful, so it wasn't a big difference anyway. That's my point. Why do you need to have a girlfriend? I don't know. What I for? I know. What I know. does it do for you? It's nothing, obviously. Huh. Except for more uh, headache and bills that I don't need. Right. Right. So uh, she uh, she got breast implants and... Uh, Who paid for that? You know, she uh, uh, she did. She eventually paid for it, but I had a co-sign because I'm the one with the credit. So, in other words, she's paying for those breasts. She and if she, off. Uh, yeah, off. yeah, she paid it off. Yeah, that's what did. Did you have to pay anything towards that? Uh, no, and she didn't have some money. I did make a couple of the payments, but she uh, uh, sued one of her old bosses and got a uh, settlement, and ended up paying it all off. Did she pay you back? Uh, no, she didn't actually give me any money. Uh -huh. gave, I think she gave me like a couple hundred bucks for something. But you was, made you know, payments on her breast implants. Yeah, I know. You're a sucker. I know, I know, I know. So what is the I question know. here? The question is, uh, she sued her new boss, and then she's supposed to, uh, went through and... So this is what she does. She goes out, gets jobs, and then sues her boss for sexual harassment or something like that? Yep. I see. So she's a, 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 a liar and a criminal. Pretty much. Right. Okay, so what is the question? She's supposed to be getting like $200,000 or supposedly the next, in the next like uh, month. And, uh, you know, I, uh, she walked in on me with some broad uh, about, say, a month ago. And so me and her, you know, I broke up with her, told her, you know, I don't want to see you around here, yada, yada, yada. And uh, she's supposed to get this money. Now she's calling me all crying how she misses me. And, you know, I'm already seeing other broads. You know, I'm not even trying to get into anything. I'm just trying to have fun. And uh, she's supposed to get this money. She's like, I'll buy you whatever you want. I'll do this. I'll do that. And it's like, you know, all my friends are saying, don't. Here's what you do. Add up all the money you gave her. Uh-huh. Tell her you need her to pay you back first. Uh-huh. Then, when she pays you back, tell her, F you, I don't want to see you anymore anyway. Yeah. See, everyone, you know, that's what everyone says, like, just, you know. Get, get the, the money, money first. Get the money that you need. But... Get the money that you paid for those breast implants and all the other money. Add it up. Figure out how much it was. Yeah. Tell her you are not going to see her anymore because she took all that money, and now that she's got money, she's not giving any of it to you. Yeah, see, the only thing I was, the only thing I was, she was like, oh, I'll buy you a Harley, I'll buy you this. You don't need a Harley, you want the money back. Yeah, yeah. All right, Tom. So you tell her to write you a check for the money she owes you. Mm-hmm. Then, after she does, and after the check clears, tell her to screw off. Yeah, I, the other thing is I was like wondering, should I just screw her over ten times worse than she screwed me? No, nope. no, get the money you're owed. And then tell her to screw up. Okay. And then stop with the girlfriends, you idiot. I know, I know. Uh, and I'm not really, like, trying to be faithful. I just, I don't know, it's kind of comfortable having someone there at nighttime when you go home. Pal, you can have seven different women a week there when you get home. I know. I you know. do not need to have a girlfriend, especially since you have no interest in monogamy. Yeah, I know. I know. I know, I listen to you every day, and it's just like, I, I go through it in my head, it's like, dude, what am I doing to myself? Stop I, doing it. I know. All right, Tom, will you take me out with the bucket? Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM with your professor, it's Dexter. Hello. You got it. How you doing, Tom? Hi, right, Dexter. So, professor. Yes. Last, last time we talked, which was a couple of months ago, you gave me a homework assignment. Because I was with a girl that wouldn't let me have more than a few beers, spend my money, live at my place, and she wouldn't fold the socks. Uh-huh. All I got to say to you is thanks. My homework assignment is done. Did you I dump that bitch? You got it. Yeah! This weekend, I'm a single man. I'm going to go out, have as many beers as I want, and even buy them for the rest of the ladies. Love that. How did she react when you dumped that bitch? I got the ring back. No. Yep. Marriage, is, the relationship is gone. I didn't get married. Excellent. And I got the ring back. Excellent. Did she yell and scream? Did she throw it at you? What happened? Uh, I was more of the crying part. Oh, maybe we can work it out. Spend some time apart. Maybe it'll work out down the road. No, it won't. All I got to say is, thanks, Tom. 
And can you take me out with a screaming orgasm? You're going to be hearing a lot of these in the next few weeks, Dexter. Here oh. is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Jonathan on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, what's going on, man? Not much. I'm heading down to uh, I'm heading down to a first date right now, and I need tips from the professor. I've been that I've been the I've listened to you for so long, man, and I've been that accommodating pussy guy that you know that just the the guy that I don't want to be anymore. And I listen to the show, man, and I want I want I want to change. So I need tips from the professor on how to handle a first date, Tom Lika style. All right, uh, where are you planning on taking her? Um, well, we're, we're going to this thing. We're probably going to cruise up the coast and probably uh, uh, go to a restaurant was, was kind of the, the tentative plan and then just kind of hang out. There's real, like, no plan at this Do point. you know which restaurant? Uh, no, no. Probably uh, uh, so, somewhere not too expensive, you know, kind of... Kind Something of cheap. Something cheap. Yeah. Okay. Cheap. Cheap. Che cheaper, cheaper the better. If, if not... If, $40 uh, is your maximum budget. Okay, okay. That's cheap. Now, do you need to be near the water somewhere? Um, we're probably going to end up near the water. I'm, I'm, uh, it's going to be kind of probably Manhattan Beach area or, you know, can maybe you, a little further up. Can, can you go a little north of there? Uh, probably, I'm gonna yeah. Give you a, I'm going to give you a cheap one. Okay. Okay. It's called C&O. 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 It's an Italian restaurant on Washington Boulevard. Okay. Right near the beach in Venice. Okay. All right. Yeah, you can look it up and get the phone number. Super cheap Italian food. Fantastic. And if you want to save money, think, they, they have very large, like, family-style portions. Both of you get the same thing. How often? Is that what you said? No, you get the same thing that she's getting. Oh, get the same thing? Yeah, okay. just order one of them. That's all you have to do. Let me know how you make out, Jonathan. Good luck.